Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to the daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about some exciting things in regards to market cap. We're also going to be talking about Hedera's recent little bit of an allocation in regards to the circulating supply, how that came to be, and so forth. So overall, let's just jump into it. So we do see the market still kind of ranging here. Let's just F5 it just to make sure everything is updated. Uh, so yeah, pretty much everything is still kind of sitting the same. Uh, when we go down to HBAR, a lot of people were noticing a little bit of a different story here. As we do see that there is almost 15 billion in circulating supply. A lot of people were bearish on this saying, well, why is there so much more supply? This is dilution. Uh, this is, you know, inflating the price. It's inflating the, the supply, the market cap, blah, blah, blah. Listen, it's not that big of a deal. And honestly speaking, when we talk about how much of the circulating supply is out there, you know, for most assets, when we talk about, you know, inflation of the circulating supply or the price or the market cap, you know, Hedera Hashgraph for what it is, you know, is probably one of the less inflated assets in regards to token unlock. So I'm not too concerned about that. I already did an update on tokenomics just recently on this channel as well. Um, I think HBAR in regards to the recent allocation all stems from this. So we do see the 5 billion allocated to develop the Hedera ecosystem. This goes back to the 17th of September. Now we do see that this represents 20% of the total Hedera Hashgraph supply um, and will be delivered through an independent HBAR foundation. So when we're talking about this, this is pretty much developing the entire ecosystem we're talking about uh this will be put forward in regards to uh scaling up the blockchain and pretty much allowing it to work more efficiently we do see here partner at dla piper a member of the hedera governing council explained the move was aimed at driving decentralization of the blockchain we believe that the hedera network to re reach its full potential as the trust layer of the internet we must continue the strategy of decentralizing the governance of the ecosystem which started with its unique hedera governing council structure he said our aim uh with the transfer of these assets is to ensure that decisions about the growth of the network will continue to be further decentralized through the role of the independent hbar foundation we just hear the governing council has announced the approval of a plan to allocate 10.7 billion hbars approximately 20 percent of the total supply currently worth a estimated us five billion dollars as of september 16th towards the development of the hedera ecosystem so overall this has me very bullish because they are basically focusing on a lot of things that are actually being able to allocate grants and funding the to developer startups and other organizations the mission is simple deliver DeFi, iGaming, nfts and cbdc's to the hedera ecosystem i mean this statement here that their mission is very very bullish i mean DeFi, iGaming, nfts and cbdc's are all massive markets we already talked about cbdc's a lot um but we do see here however it appears that the future of hedera ashraf is in safe hands uh has extensive experience in software enterprise and venture capital having de uh, delivered corporate ventures and mergers in the saas saas uh, and multiple or multi-cloud space. The Hedera network is the most widely used public ledger as we already know. Their mission is pretty much just to form digitally native econo uh, economies and ecosystems, controlling their own assets, identities, data marketplaces, and more. We are excited to engage with and support organizations and teams that share this vision. I think that we are going to be talking about a massive innovative you know development on the ecosystem i think that this is very bullish that's why when i see the circulating supply at 30 percent which is also their main goal for quarter four they already said in 2021 uh to have 30 percent out there in circulating supply so i think that this is great and i, I think that it's great for the long-term growth as well as this project is going to prosper into a new age of crypto and uh, i do want to talk to you guys a little bit about market cap and also price appreciation so i tweeted this out yesterday got a lot of love got a lot of hate got a lot of whatever uh but we do see here h bar plus m tech equals trillions of dollars HBAR's market cap could be $9 trillion in the future, and here we are with people thinking it's unbelievable. Take a look at Apple, $2 trillion market cap, and they are just a product manufacturer and distributor. These are revolutionary assets that we are holding, and I think that that is the biggest problem with a lot of people in the space, right? They can't see a long-term vision of crypto. I understand that we are sitting at, you know, a $2.10 trillion market cap, so to say that one asset's going to have, you know, a $9 trillion market cap might be unbelievable to some, but when we look at the long-term view here, and when we look at some of these 
these assets and what they're trying to do. And when we talk about the prosper and, you know, digitized age of finance and all these major sectors of gaming, we talk about NFTs, we talk about DeFi, we talk about traditional finance being a bridge with DeFi, with Alliance Block. I mean, there's so many, you know, use cases that are coming out of crypto that have the potential to revolutionize and actually reinvent the wheel for a lot of these massive markets. And HBAR is doing incredible things as being the widely most utilized DLT technology, the greenest technology, the only technology out there that has ABFT compliance under it, uh, or consensus, I mean, sorry, um, under it, which is the highest grade of security that you could possibly get. And what do you think is going to happen with that? Enterprises are going to choose HBAR over pretty much every other asset. And when we talk about that, we talk about HBAR being worth, you know, hundreds of dollars at some point in time in the future. Of course, you know, I can't put a date on this. I can't say, hey, HBAR is going to be worth $9 trillion tomorrow or next week. But I'm just saying right now that HBAR, if if HBAR and MTech could grasp the $90 trillion CBDC flow that they were talking about, and if HBAR is just at a fraction of a 10% of that uh, value, you know, at $9 trillion plus, I mean, that's a significant price appreciation. Now, we also see here that uh, we, we see individuals talking about, you know, the market cap going from two to $200 trillion in the next 10 years. This is coming from Real Vision. Listen closely. There's a whole group who are very smart that say, listen, I'm actually just interested in the monetary aspects of Bitcoin, and that's what I want to focus on. Absolutely fine. There's a bunch that say, listen, I've looked at this, and I think that Bitcoin is going to end up being entirely dominant um, because of this monetary aspect and the security of the network. And that's fine, but they have to see that there is a probability that something else could. Um, and then there's a bunch of people who just don't want to hear and that those are the people who tend to be driven to protect tribally their network because if it's network adoption then they need to protect their network at all costs well kind of ethereans and others tend to be more aware of the broader network itself of all of this being part of a larger network and that the rising tide lifts all boats and my point of view has always been I think the market cap goes from two trillion to two hundred trillion in the next ten years. And mm. there's plenty of room for everybody. Nobody's eating anybody's pie here. All the pies are gonna grow. So, you know, as Solana grows, it's only helping the Ethereum ecosystem grow and it's only gonna help Bitcoin grow because more people come into the space. And I think that that is also a great saying there, right? It's it's the fact that there's plenty of room for everybody in this market. But we do talk about who is going to be holding the number one spot, right? I always say HBAR has the potential to hold the number one spot, and I still believe that. And it's the idea because of how many use cases and how much utility is actually under the belt at Hedera. In fact, we always go back to this where we talk about other companies that are building on Hedera, right? We see we decided to leverage the Hedera network because it is unparalleled in cost and time to finality and have um, and have the proven green credentials to boot. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we're talking about this, right, we talk about all these other little you know companies joining the team. We talk about all these other you know little assets that you know are coming onto the Hedera ecosystem, building with e the ecosystem. And a lot of people are just kind of worried about the bigger picture. What is Google doing? What is the CBDCs doing? What are these banks doing? All right, we see this going all the way back to May 12th. ALT AVE launches Doc Distribute built on Hedera. Now, this is seeking to address the often underconsidered paper waste problem, which immerses financial institutions and their customers slash clients. So this is focusing on financial institutions and their customers and clients overall in the financial services sector. Okay, now when we're talking about this, they're talking about, you know, 5 billion pieces of paper a year. That comes to an annual cost of $1.7 billion in GBP. Put another way, this is equivalent to 2.4 million trees. So this is a huge problem. This is also a green aspect that Hedera is trying to solve. As, I, as I've said multiple times, 
Adara Hashgraph is trying to get everything and anything green. And this could be spread around everywhere. This could be in government use cases. We even come back down to here where they're talking about uh, it's pushing the boundaries for regulatory technology. It's also talking about financial centers. They're talking about, you know, government agencies. They're talking about, you know, just financial institutions and document recipients as well. This could be huge when we talk about a massive use case. But this is, a, again, it doesn't mention a massive, you know, company. It doesn't mention a massive use case. So people probably just ignored the fact that this is also worth 1.7 billion GBP. And this is a massive use case. Again, there's so many use cases like this under Hedera. When we talk about 80 plus use cases already, and we talk about this number growing day by day, and all of these other little projects on here, we're talking about billions of transactions for just something like ad stacks, right? So just imagine when all of these networks and all of these projects and all of these, you know, massive use cases are already live. And even if the smallest tier ones are only transacting at a billion transactions a year, just think about how massive the ecosystem will grow and think about how much the price appreciation will grow. So when we talk about a $9 trillion market cap for Adara, all they really have to do is prosper with MTech in the CBDC sector just to achieve that alone. But just imagine if MTech, you know, wasn't there for that. Think about all of the other use cases that will allow it to hit the $9 trillion market cap to $10 trillion market cap. Who knows where the market cap could la land, but I will say this. <clears throat> I don't doubt, I have zero doubt that we will hit a $9 trillion plus market cap uh, at some point in time in the future. It's inevitable, especially when we talk about how massive the entire crypto market will grow. Now, I'm not telling you guys to get your hopes up that we're going to see $9 trillion, you know, in five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be. But I definitely could see $9 trillion plus um, when the entire market cap grows to astronomical heights, probably by 2031, honestly. So in 10 years. So with that being said, I hope that kind of clarifies that. And I, I seen a lot of people asking me questions about that. Well, I hope that kind of clarifies that overall. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.